On the bustling markets of Whiterun to the frozen peaks of Winterhold, Skyrim cities are as diverse as they are captivating. But not all holds are created equal. Some are bursting with life and adventure, while others, well, they're best left to the wolves. In this video, we're embarking on a journey across Skyrim to rank every major city, including Ravenrock, from worst to best. We'll dive into the aesthetics, the amenities, the quests, the characters, and everything in between to determine which city reigns supreme. So wizards, grab your mead, charge your spells, and let's explore the heart of Skyrim. Oh, and don't forget to join our Discord community for even more Skyrim fun. The link's below. Number 10. Winterhold Winterhold is without a doubt the most mind-numbingly boring, cold, and downright depressing city in all of Skyrim. Do I really even need to get into why this is? Just take a good look at the place. It's really hard to believe that Winterhold was once a thriving metropolis, the capital of Skyrim, rivaling even solitude in power and prestige. But then came the Great Collapse, which basically flushed the entire city down the toilet, aka the Sea of Ghosts. And now this is what's left of it, a shithole. The locals here love to pin the blame on the mages of the College of Winterhold for the collapse, so everyone here is pretty stuck up. But in their defense, it is kind of suspicious how the college remains relatively unscathed while the rest of the city is in ruins. At the same time though, the weather here is so atrocious that it could easily just be nature's doing. Either way, expect a lot of grumpy faces and reminders of the city's tragic past. Out of the eight buildings remaining, only four are even usable. The local frozen hearth inn and trading shop are barely hanging on, and there's no forge for crafting weapons or armor. No arcane enchanter for imbuing your gear with magical properties. All you'll find is a wood chopping block and a couple of chickens pecking at the frozen ground. So the only reason to ever venture into this frozen wasteland is to attend the College of Winterhold. But if you're not interested in mastering the arcane arts, then trust me, stay far, far away. There's nothing for you here but a cold shoulder, and that's Snow Joke. Number 9. Morthor Okay, let's be real. How many of us have actually spent quality time in Morthor? Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, why bother when Skyrim's got far better cities to explore? You don't. For starters, it's in the swampy region of Hjalmarch, which isn't exactly paradise unless you're Shrek. It's perpetually foggy, the trees look like they're straight out of a horror movie, and the local wildlife is just waiting to make you its next meal. The city itself is wide open, no walls. Just a handful of guards trying to hold back the tide of bears, saber cats, and everything else the swamp throws at them. But hey, at least the internal politics are interesting. Jarl idgrod has got these visions from the divines that guide her leadership or something, and now she's invited a wizard named Falion to protect the city. The locals here are understandably skeptical, but being a wizard myself, I can't help but feel bad for the guy. He doesn't exactly do himself any favors though. My talents are useful here. I help maintain order, even if it goes unnoticed. Then there's that burned down house, a tragic reminder of a wife and daughter lost to a fire, and the culprits, vampires, living right here in Morthal, blending in, waiting for their next victim. So yeah, welcome to the feast. Now before we write Morthal off completely though, there are a couple of reasons to brave the swamp. First, if you deal with those pesky vampires, you get Winstad Manor, one of the best player homes in the entire game. Second, there's Mirrorwatch, a haven for aspiring wizards, just a stone's throw away. And if you want the full scoop on these awesome dwellings, check out my ranking of all the player homes in Skyrim, the link's in the description. So aside from all the drama, Morthal itself is lacking. There's a lumber mill, which seems to be the city's sole source of trade, the obligatory inn, an alchemy shop, and Falion's house with an arcane enchanter. If you need a blacksmith, tough shit. Morthal's got a tanning rack and a grinding stone, and that's about it. So, final verdict, Morthal's biggest problem isn't the vampires or the swamp, or even the questionable leadership. It's just that it sucks. Number 8. Markarth now, I really didn't want to have to put this city so low on my list, but I kinda had to. Markarth is, in my humble opinion, the most visually impressive city in all of Skyrim. It's literally carved into a massive rock face, with waterfalls cascading down all around. It's just magical. 
In fact, this architectural marvel was built by the Dwemer, the same folks who made those awesome ruins we all love exploring. If you agree, then like and subscribe. If you disagree, well, subscribe first, then like after. But as beautiful as Markarth is, it's got some serious problems. Would look lovely on yeah, it's got a reputation for being unsafe, with crime and corruption lurking around every corner. I die for my the people. Crimes, the Forsworn are here in the city. Part of the problem is the Forsworn. They have a historical claim to the city, and they're not afraid to fight for it. But the real issue here is the Silver Blood family. They control the city's silver mine, and they use that wealth to basically run the entire place. The city guards are in their pocket, so if you get on their bad side, you might find yourself falsely accused of a crime and thrown into Sidna Mine, which also happens to be the city's prison. It's a brutal system. And let's not forget about the creepy stuff. An abandoned house where the Daedric Prince of Domination hangs out, people worshipping Namira, the Daedric Prince of Hunger, they're certainly not vegans, and extreme poverty hidden away in the Warrens. It's a lot to take in. Jarl Igmund seems either oblivious to all this, or is just too cowardly to act. Despite all its problems though, Markarth does have its upsides. It's got shops for everything you need, a smithing station, an alchemy lab, and even an inn, though it's owned by the Civilbloods, so you know, keep that in mind. If you want to enchant your gear, you'll have to trek all the way up to the Understone Keep, a bit of a pain in the ass. But if you own the house here, you can have both the alchemy and enchanter inside, which is way more convenient. So if you're looking for a place that's both breathtaking and a little bit heartbreaking, Markarth is the place to be. Just watch your step and watch your back. Number 7. Raven Rock Raven Rock isn't technically a city, it's a town, despite being the capital of Solstein. But for the sake of this ranking, we're giving it a promotion. Located on the southern coast of Solstheim, this isolated island means every trip to and from the Skyrim mainland involves a lovely loading screen. <sighs> Thanks Bethesda. Now when I first arrived in Ravenrock, I was blown away. The architecture is like nothing else in Skyrim, inspired by the shells of giant insects. But then reality sets in. The landscape is bleak, dominated by ash from the nearby Red Mountain Volcano. It's not just an eyesore either, like I'm not even sure how the people breathe here, especially during those frequent ash storms. Better safe than sorry, right? This constant asphalt has crippled Raven Rock's economy. Farming is limited, the fish are nearly all dead, and even the once profitable Raven Rock mine is shut down. The city's been in a downward spiral for quite some time, and has been largely forgotten. But as the Dragonborn, we can change that. We can reopen the Ebony Mine, clear out the dangerous Ash Spawn, and free the town from Mirax control. And seeing the miners regain their purpose and the town thrive again is incredibly rewarding. It still doesn't change the fact that Raven Rock's a shit all though. After all, we can't polish a turd. But hey, for saving Councillor Morvane, we get Severin Manor, a decent player home nearby. And despite its struggles, Raven Rock has all the essentials. Smithing, alchemy, enchanting, and merchants. The Wretching Netch Inn might have seen better days, but at least it offers shelter from the endless ash. So while Ravenrock may not be the most glamorous city, town, in Skyrim, it has a unique aesthetic, offering a rewarding experience for those willing to cough up a lung. Number 6. Dawnstar now if Morthal had a frosty cousin, it would be Dawnstar. It's got no walls, just breathtaking views of the Sea of Ghosts, and a constant reminder you're in the frozen north. So make sure to pack some warm clothes, or you'll freeze your assets off. Still, I'll take this icy booty over Shrek Swamp any day of the week. Dawnstar's got a decent port too. It's no solitude or wind town, but it handles a fair share of trade, thanks to its two mines, Ironbreaker and Quicksilver. There's a bit of a friendly rivalry between them, but Quicksilver Ore is where the money's at, so it's fairly one-sided. Plus, you can even fast travel from the port to Solitude or Windhelm, which is super handy in survival mode. Now here's the catch. Dawnstar's a bit of a nightmare. The Daedric Prince Vermina is messing with everyone's sleep, 
giving them some seriously bad dreams. So if you're looking for a good night's rest, you Sorry. might want to deal with that first. But hey, there's a mythic doll museum nearby, which is super cool to explore, and there you can start the quest for Maroon's Razor, one of the best weapons in the game. As for amenities, Dawnstar's got an apothecary with an alchemy table, and there's a blacksmith for all your gear needs. No workbench for armor upgrades though, but there is an arcane enchanter in the Jarl's longhouse. And speaking of the Jarl, if you do some favors for him, you can buy Hell Yarkon Hall, one of the best houses in Skyrim. For more info on that, check out my player home's ranking linked in the description. So if you're looking for a place to sleep with the fish, or perhaps join a certain shadowy organization, Dawnstar might just be your dream come true. Number 5. Windhelm before the Hearthfire expansion came along, Hierim was my go-to home, mostly for its awesome armory. So I used to spend a lot of time in Windhelm, but once I finally built my homestead, Windhelm became a distant memory. Now don't get me wrong, it's not a bad city or anything, it just doesn't top my list. Windhelm is old, like the oldest city in Skyrim old. Its imposing grey stone architecture reflects that, giving it this sense of strength and history. Every time I visit, I feel well protected. But those thick stone walls also make it kind of dark and gloomy. The alleyways can get pretty narrow too, almost claustrophobic. Even the buildings are tall and imposing, adding to that gothic feel. So it's an acquired taste for sure, but I don't mind it. Like Dawnstar, Windhelm's right on the coast, so the weather can be brutal. But unlike Dawnstar, Windhelm's well fortified, offering some protection from the elements. It's just too bad those walls don't block out the racism. Yeah, Windhelm isn't exactly known for its hospitality, especially if you're not a Nord. The Dark Elves are all crammed into the Grey Quarter slum, and the Argonians can't even enter the city. They're stuck out there on the docks, getting paid pennies compared to the Nords. It's pure racism, straight from Jarl Ulfric himself. He doesn't really give a shit about anything apart from kicking out the Empire. So while the city suffers as a result, we get a fancy Temple of Talos. Yay. To make matters worse, there's a serial killer targeting woman, and the guards are useless. They can't even follow this blatant blood trail directly to this house. It's like Windhelm's leadership is competing for the most inept award. Thankfully, we can hunt this killer down, but that's beside the point. Windhelm's not all that bad though. The Candlehearth Hall is warm and welcoming, perfect for drowning your sorrows in mead. Dark Elves might prefer the new Genesis Corner Club though, just saying. Windhelm also boasts a fully equipped blacksmith, an alchemy shop with a lab, and a bustling marketplace. There's even an arcane enchanter tucked away in the corner. And all of this is conveniently located in one small area, so you don't have to travel far at all. Even Hierim's nearby, if you can stomach its dark past. So whether you love it or hate it, Windhelm definitely leaves a lasting impression. It's just a shame some of those impressions are Ulfric's boot prints on the faces of non-Nords. Number 4. Volkreath now if you're used to the hustle and bustle of places like Whiterun or Solitude, Volkreath offers a welcome change of pace. Surrounded by lush greenery and the sounds of nature, it's the perfect escape from the colder cities up north. And unlike wide open Morthol and Dawnstar, Volkreath actually has some decent walls. And with all the hungry wolves and bears roaming around, you'll appreciate the extra protection. Just try not to mistake a werewolf for your friendly neighborhood dog. But hey, if you're a hunter, this place is a dream come true. So pack your bow and maybe a few silver-tipped arrows, just in case. Falkreath is known for its sprawling graveyard, the final resting place of many legendary Nords. And let's just say that it's had a bit of an impact on the local culture. You've got places like Grave Concoctions and Deadwood Lumber Mill. It's a dark sense of humor, but I gotta admit, I kinda dig it. Now aside from a minor werewolf problem and a Jarl who's maybe not the sharpest tool in the shed, Falkreath is actually a really nice place to live. You've got all the essentials, a blacksmith, an alchemy shop, a cozy inn, there's even an arcane enchanter in the Jarl's longhouse. And if you play your cards right, you can buy a beautiful lakeside home called Lakeview Manor. And again, this is another top tier dwelling. Watch my player home's ranking for more info. 
So if you're looking for a place that's both cozy and dedicated to its craft, Falkreath is a real grave opportunity. Number 3. Riftun Compared to some of Skyrim's other cities, Riftun is a visual treat. Nestled in the southeastern corner of the rift, it sits right on Lake Onric, surrounded by the Fall Forest. So you've got breathtaking views everywhere you look. Plus, it's got protective walls that actually let in plenty of sunlight. And the weather, it's almost always perfect, so no worries about freezing your nutsack off. Even the little things are convenient, like the stables, which are right by the entrance. So you can quickly grab your horse or fast travel in survival mode. At first glance, Riften has that cozy cabin in the woods feel. Those timber buildings, the canal flowing right through, it's very picturesque. And I love how everything's within spitting distance. Marketplace, blacksmith, the b and Barb for a good mead, it's all very convenient. And that's a big plus in my book. But there's a darkness lurking beneath the surface. Maven Blackbriar is the puppet master, and she's got her fingers in everything, from the Thieves' Guild to the Dark Brotherhood. She even owns the orphanage, and let's just say Gwelod the Kind isn't winning any awards for her childcare skills. The Thieves' Guild operates pretty openly from the sewers, so it's a haven for those living outside the law. Speaking of the sewers, that's where you'll find a Shadowfoot Sanctum, the perfect player home for any aspiring thief. If you're more into the honest life though, then there's Honeyside. And I really like this player home. It's cozy, has a fantastic view of the lake, and comes with its own alchemy lab and enchanting table, so no need to trek up to Mistvale Keep. So all in all, Riften is a city with a lot to offer. It may have its flaws, but it's got a certain charm that's hard to resist. Just remember, keep your eyes peeled and your coin purse close. Number 2. Solitude Perched atop a massive stone arch overlooking the Karth River, Solitude is a city that commands attention. But every time I look up at it, a little voice in my head pipes up. What if there's an earthquake? What if the sea gets a little too friendly with that arch? Solitude could end up taking a plunge faster than you can say Winterhold. Still, we can't deny the strategic advantages of this location. Inside, Solitude's architecture is impressive, yet somehow still cozy. Okay, let's give it a chance. It's the kind of fortified city you can actually relax in, and I respect that. Speaking of fortifications, Solitude takes its defense very seriously. Imposing gates, towers everywhere you look, and a massive wall blessed by the divines themselves make it one of the safest cities in Skyrim. So you're in very good hands here, as long as you're quick on your feet crossing that arch. Being the capital, Solitude is packed with landmarks. You've got the Blue Palace, home to the Jarl, Castle Dor, the Imperial Legion's HQ, and the Boring Bard's College. Yeah, the questline there is a bit underwhelming to say the least, but the Bard's College expansion mod gives it a much needed overhaul. I haven't actually tried it out myself yet, but it looks fantastic. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. So all these landmarks mean solitude is big. That's part of its charm, but it also means getting around can be a bit of a pain. Take Proud Spire Manor, the fancy house you can buy here. It costs a whopping 25,000 gold, and that's before upgrades. But getting back to the point, it's a fair old trek from the main entrance. Sure, you can fast travel to the Blue Palace to cut down on travel time, but even then, it's a bit of a hike. Thankfully, all the essential shops are near the main gate though, including the inn. The blacksmith is up top too, but there's no smelter! The capital city of Skyrim, and they forgot the smelter. How in oblivion is that? But all in all, Solitude is a city that's hard to forge get. It may not have a smelter, but it more than makes up for it with its stunning architecture, rich history, and vibrant atmosphere. Number 1. Whiterun Sure, every city has its charm, but Whiterun just hits different. For many of us, it was our first taste of Skyrim's epic scale and beauty. It's where we learned the ropes, joined our first faction, and maybe even Fusrodad a chicken or two. First off, its location is perfect. Whiterun is smack dab in the center of Skyrim, making it the ideal base camp for any adventurer. Need to head to High Hrothgar? Whiterun's your starting point. 
feeling swampy, Morthor's just a short ride away. It's a bustling trade hub, a strategic stronghold, and thanks to Jarl Balgraf, a surprisingly peaceful oasis in a land torn by civil war. He puts his people first, not politics, which makes Whiterun feel genuinely welcoming. Sure, there's some friction between the Stormcloaks and Imperials, but that's just part of the city's charm. Whiterun's compact size and three distinct districts make it super easy to navigate. The Plains District is where the action's at, with shops, inns, and even the blacksmith right by the gate. And yes, it's got a smelter, so you can upgrade your gear and sell your loot the moment you arrive. Even Breeze Home is right there for a measly 5,000 gold, which is a perfect starter home, though it does lack an arcane enchanter. For one of those, you'll need to head to Dragon's Reach, but at least you can fast travel there. Just outside Whiterun lies another fantastic home, Tundra Homestead. If you're curious about how it stacks up against all the other player homes in Skyrim, check out my ranking linked in the description. Next up is the Wind District. It's mostly residential here, but it's also home to the Temple of Kinnereth, Yorvaska where you'll find the Companions, and the legendary Skyforge. Oh, and there's a Shrine of Talos nearby for easy disease curing. It's a very picturesque area, especially once you restore the Gildegreen, and I think we can all agree that the Companions questline is way more engaging than the Bard's College. Finally, we ascend to the Cloud District. Dragon's Reach dominates the skyline here, with waterfalls cascading down into the city's canals. It's a view I never get tired of, but Dragon's Reach isn't just a pretty palace. It's also a prison for fearsome dragons, and not even fancy solitude has that. Jarl Balgraf rules from here, and he's a pretty chill dude. But there's a dark secret lurking, one that makes his son Nelkia a real pain in the ass. Another wanderer, here to lick my father's boots. Good job. It all ties back to the Daedric Prince Mafala, but fear not because we can deal with that darkness and get one of the best weapons in the process. So whether you're a seasoned adventurer or just starting your journey, White Run's got something for everyone. It's a city that'll always hold a special place in my heart, even if Nazim's constant reminders of the Cloud District make me want to Fusra Darim off Dragon Reach's balcony. And that concludes our Skyrim City rankings. Whether you agree or disagree with my choices, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and join our Discord community for even more Skyrim discussions. As always, thanks for watching, Wizards. For this has been the Welsh Wizard, and I shall see you all in the next one.